Hi guys, this is Aaron Etheridge, lead designer for Planner Conquest, and this is the first in a series of short tutorials that we're doing to help new players get into the game. This first tutorial is going to cover starting a new game. The first thing we're going to want to do is click single player, then new game. The first screen we're going to encounter is the planes screen. Hovering over the icon for each plane will give you a brief, brief description of that plane as well as what benefits and detriments it has. Uh, you can click the icon to add planes to the game. Uh, each one of them you can set the terrain type ranging from Pangea to Islands uh, and the amount of uh, land coverage which is the, the land to liquid ratio uh, water in the case of prime, lava in the case of fire, etc. etc. Um, we're going to leave this at one because I want to show you something on the next screen. One little thing I want to note before we do move on is that this question mark icon, whenever you see it, you can bring up more information about what you're looking at. The next screen is the game screen, which allows you to change all the game settings, such as difficulty, and I would suggest you turn that down uh, unless you are already very skilled at Forex games. World size. All right, right now we're playing with a single plane, and uh, it's a medium size, which we can only have two opponents. All right, if we turn that up, we can have more opponents. Now, this is total land mass, and the reason that matters is, okay, say we want a, a medium map or even a, a normal map, uh, we can go back and turn on several different planes and add more opponents. All right, so we can we can control the size of each plane and which which planes are actually included in the game. All right, the rest of these I'm not going to go through. Uh, they're very self-explanatory and they have a tool tip. <clears throat> The next screen, screen is Faction, and this, in most cases, applies more to the early game than the late game, with the exception of the Unhallowed. All right, the Unhallowed are the Undead. They do not work with the other races, and selecting them is going to give you a completely different gameplay experience throughout the game. Any of the other races, you select them. As you play through, you can conquer neutral cities, enemy cities, and, and add more races to your lineup and sort of round out your armies and things like that. So most of the races, this is really an early game selection, what you want to start with. With the Unhallowed, this is a game changer, so keep that in mind. Uh, here you can set your flag color. The next is uh, creating your sorcerer. For your first few games, I recommend using a pre-made lord. It will get you in and let you play very, very quickly without having to worry about things. They're all good builds. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're actually going to do create your own. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is select portrait which I like Merlin, and there he is, and give ourselves a name, an accurate name. Uh, oh, skip, okay. <clears throat> Next is where you're going to spend your points for character creation. All right, this screen defines your Sorcerer Lord and is absolutely going to have a massive effect on your entire gameplay experience. So it's important to get what you want here. There are obviously a number of different viable builds, uh, many, many, many viable builds, but it's going to change how you play the game. Uh, first we're going to look at the disciplines panel just because it's a little simpler. Um, here you have a number of things that affect your Sorcerer Lord in one way or another. They all have tool tips. We're not going to go through them. An important note is that you have negative disciplines that you can take. You have 12 character points. If you take something like Prude, you get 14. So you can pick negatives that you're willing to deal with in order to get more positives. Some of these are locked. All right, like uh, fire mastery requires nine fire. So if we get nine fire, we unlock it. Okay, and we can be a fire master. Uh, one thing that's very important to explain about these circles is from mentalism to destruction. These are what are called effects circles. They sort spells according to effect. From fire to life are elemental circles. They sort, sort spells according to element. That is very important because each spell has both an element and an effect. Take something like flame error. All right, that is fire and destruction. All right, and these stack. So fireball, fireball is a perfect example. It's fire destruction, and it's tier three. So if you take two in fire and one in destruction, fireball may appear in your potential spell list that you can research later. All right. Needless to say, uh, what circles you pick. Are that de as that defines your potential spell list, it creates utterly game-changing effects. Um, and so, you know, like a, a, an interesting build is to take, uh, you know, six in an elemental uh, or an effect circle rather, and then uh, three in two different elemental circles. Because what this will do, the, since these stack, is you'll get the first six tiers of destruction, 
the first three tiers of fire, the first three tiers of water, and you'll get tiers 7, 8, and 9 in fire destruction and 7, 8, and 9 in water destruction. Okay, this is rather complex and, you know, you're going to have to actually jump in and play around with it before you really get the feel for it, but that's, that's what's going on on the screen. All right, then we have to pick our starting spells. All right, now, if you look here, uh, fire, we, don't, we get three tier uh, one. Water, we get three tier one. We had three circles in each of those. Uh, destruction, we get six tier one because we had six circles. Now, if we went higher, seven, eight, nine, we'd unlock some tier twos. We'd unlock one tier three if we got mastery. Um, all right, it's also important to note, just like I said, flame arrow. All right, that's a fire spell and a destruction spell. So we picked it as one of our fire spells and it's already selected as a destruction spell. All right. And same thing with uh, the water spell, Ice Bolt. All right. So the way these circles stack is very, very crucial. And it's really going to change your potential spell list. And spells are a major part of Planner Conquest. So, you know, that build at the beginning, it, it's really critical to how you're going to play the game, which is why I recommend that you, you go with a pre-made Sorcerer Lord. Once you've done that a couple of times, I think you'll be able to, to get in and create custom Sorcerer Lords that are really exactly what you want and give you an edge based on your play style. That's obviously going to vary from player to player, but there is enough for pretty much everybody to find something that they're looking for. Uh, obviously, I should have mentioned that when you hover over these spells, you get the spell description. And these are just your starting spells. Um, you know, they're, you're, you'll research more when you get in-game, but, uh, but we'll get to that in the next tutorial. So this is, right now we could click Start Game and we're ready to go. I hope that's uh, gotten you through the new game process. So I look forward to speaking to you again in the next tutorial.